Dear community, welcome to Sense Expert. We are here at a deep tech company in the middle of Munich, the Munich center. And I have the honor to have the CEO, Cornelia Bayer with me, whom I met already so many times lately at Jack in Paris, where they had also their yeah, exhibition booth. And it was now time to really deep dive in their solution, in their system. While I will be talking to Arne Büttner and Alexander, we will talk there more on the technical side. We will have a yeah, big picture with, with Cornelia about how this business is running. So as a starter, Cornelia, maybe you can introduce yourself to our community. How did you come from a, such an exciting background into a composites and plastics industry? Hi, first of all, nice meeting you all from the distance to the camera lens. Very happy to be here with Ilkay today. Let me give you a short summary of who I am and how did I come to the plastics composite industry. Yeah, I took quite a roller coaster in my life, 20, 25 years of being in business, so the storybook is nicely filled. Um, but yeah, what is my background, where do I came from or where do I come from? It's mainly uh, business development and sales, this is how I started. Uh, I lived in many, many places uh, throughout Europe, Amsterdam and London, and I moved to New York and San Francisco and Toronto. and I could um, yeah, develop and build up businesses. So business growth, innovation, intra-entrepreneurship is my passion. And the industries that I've seen over the yeah, many years that I'm in my working life is from hospitality over to finance. I was in the renewable sector and then I was a founder myself. And this is when the startup and the venture world started uh, to get interesting for me. I was a founder in a building material startup. So I learned a lot over the course of uh, the last 13 years being in, in the startup world. And how did I come to um, the plastics industry? Um, I'm, I would say it's like a Virgin Mary to the child, but no joke aside. I, back in 2019 and 20, I did my executive MBA in Paris. And I was thinking, okay, what is next? Um, I'm a person that likes challenges. I need to learn new things, but on the other side, I would like to give what I've learned and my expertise. And then, uh, yeah, second is I was very interested in what is the German roots, their family businesses all around. Um, so I said, okay, combining my venture and startup experience and a family-oriented business, so this is how I found Natch or Natch found me. And I have the honor um, yeah, to be on board since now August 21 and support um, Alexander as my yeah, partner in crime, so to say as a managing director, being responsible for the sales and business development and the growth of the company as a running CEO currently. Very exciting and very impressive CV that you have, uh, Cornelia. Mm -hmm. And also congratulations for your power and your passion that you are bringing into this business. And you are certainly one of the key figures in this industry. And of course, if I may say that, um, it makes always a great inspiration also for other female leaders. For sure, and I think I would like to highlight this point because I think it's not um, it's not automatically uh, or normal, let's say, it's not normal today that you find someone in a traditional company like ours where uh, the shareholders or owners um, take on and entrust the females, even though we say, okay, diversity and gender, and there's not a, big, uh, a biggie anymore. No, it is. So with Paul Moritz um, deciding to uh, give um, a female the opportunity to be um, a founder of one of their first startups, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm very honored. Yeah. That's that's very good and uh, Nech keep, uh, keep going, this is uh, really great, we support you guys. Uh, let me come now back to the special situation you have as a company. Cornelia, as you probably know, I'm also a coach in the uh, innovation scene with the European Commission, yes. with the European Innovation Council to be more precise and I have to deal a lot with innovation driven companies. Now, Nech is an, a very old traditional standing company company. I've ma made my way to your website and I've scrolled the history down and back and back and, and nearly it had not found an end. Uh, this was it's such a long history. Have a look at it. And now you are, can we say, a startup, a venture, venture startup, venture, yes. company venture. 
And, and, and how is it, if I may ask from a cultural point of view? So you are innovation driven and you have to push technology further. And on the other side, there is a company that is long standing and they have their milling and inspection business units. And now you are coming with a business unit that has AI, that has deep tech in his genes. How do, do this Those match? Those words fit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this is actually a very impressive and it was very important personally when I took the decision to join the company. Um, it's a mindset question and the company or the history of, of the Netsch Group itself, it's 150 year old, year old traditional business. And when you mentioned and referred to the business units that they have, and so um, we have those three main business units. It's the analyzing and testing, it's um, the grinding and dispersing business and the pumps. And Netsch is a hidden champion. So, um, but how does a traditional company and now this new world of AI digitalization fits into the game of and what we are doing as a sales expert? And uh, the answer is very, very easy. We have, and the company is run by the fifth generation um, of Paul and Moritz Netsch, and I think they made an impression on me, and I said, uh, the mindset that they have and what they want to, um, where they want to go forward is um, transforming the company. They know that they will not leave their kids a machine, a machinery company. So they know they have to um, evolve and develop and excel on the digital opportunities that are out there. So I think the, the start was by um, introducing the NetchX incubator. So it's an entrepreneurship focused incubator from the Netch business. And they supported us um, creating Sense Expert and legally spin off the company. So we were part of our sister company, the Netch Analyzing and Testing, which are widely global known as a laboratory machinery company. So the technology that is behind Sense Expert is basically um, a transition. We have a core technology with the Netch Analyzing and Testing business, which is over 50 years old. And our running CTO, Dr. Alexander Kalupka, who was one of the, let's say, inventors of transitioning this core technology based on the demands he daily faced with the Netch Analyzing and Testing clients. So how, does, how do we fit culturally? We have freedom, we can be agile, shareholder value is important, but the brothers, the Netch brothers know that they have to take a step back, invest heavily to make something like us develop and explore and venture out. And this is the freedom that I found and that's why I'm here. Cornelia, you have talked uh, a lot about that you are loving challenges. Yes. And um, let's talk projects. Uh, what is a very challenging project that comes up to your mind? We are first mover. We introduce a technology with Sense Expert that yes has its roots way back in material science and blah 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 and laboratory equipment, but yeah. it's it's so much more. Yeah. Um, so the biggest challenge for us was um, to educate, to educate, and I quote a client mm -hmm. um, that we have seen. Oh, I didn't know that something like this exists. Okay. So and this is the biggest challenge I would say. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a technology on hand that nobody knows exists, mm -hmm. when when we look at our industry involved sensor technology, which is one part of the story of our technology, right? Everyone knows, oh, pressure and temperature sensors, this is what you do. But no, this is not what we do. Yeah. We measure in-mold material characterization. Yeah. We see deviations when they occur. So how do you educate someone that doesn't know that something like this exists? Mm -hmm. So brand awareness, educational knowledge, transfer. Um, we had to start from scratch. And then you could ask, okay, but why do you be, why are you blue and why are you sense expert? Why don't you go out with green and natch reputation, blah, of a company that's 150 years old? Um, we want to change. We are on a transition course with Netch where we introduce also the digital transformation. So we made the decision we we are not leaving our roots. We are still Netch, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and this is important for the customers to mm -hmm. know. We are in different industries, as you know. So aviation is one of them. And aviation, it's very, very hard to get into that industry. Yes. The certification, testing, years until you validation. Uh, I would just say as a supplier. Long cycle. Right? Yeah. Long sales cycle. Exactly. Yeah. So we can proudly say we accomplished that. We have a client I can't name yet wow. yeah. because we are still in the process. Mm -hmm. But we managed to be, without being certified, just 
proving what we can achieve, mm -hmm. we are now in a serial production with them, um, and this is a milestone. So of course, now we are seeing other aviation um, aerospace companies reach out to us. So this was very challenging to uh, convince a company based on truth and numbers and um, results, um, and we are so proud of that. Okay, congratulations on that one. Thank you. So, community, we make a hard cut and we are changing the topic. I've seen that you have been called into a panel during Jack World. Mm -hmm. What was the panel about? Why did they call you on the panel? And what was your feeling about the topic? I think I would like to refer to what was evident at Czech this year, yeah. um, and there were two points. Yes. Um, so one was the hydrogen market, mm -hmm. so the growth in the hydrogen market, yeah. but the other was also the topic around sustainability, digitalization. Absolutely. So huge challenge what is coming our way. So, um, and when you look at the uh, dominating factors in the industry, what we what we are facing, skill, lack of skilled workers, cost pressure, sustainability, mm -hmm. and what else was uh, the topic around contract fulfillment. So, Industry 4.0, I think that was, I can say, high level what this panel was about. And um, seeing the change in materials taking center stage. Of course, dominated by sustainability and being more sustainable. So novel techs need to be there and will make the difference. So to analyze and to see um, how uh, data can be transferred and, and converted into something else, you need those kind of tools. So I think that was the reason mm -hmm. why we got invited. Mm -hmm. I think it was more an um, educating and lighting industry that there is technology out there that can see material deviations when they occur in mold, which until now was not there. And with sustainability and the recycled materials, and we have the big topic about the EU Green Law deal. So yes, the demand, we need to do something, but nobody helps you And how can I do it? So the challenges that we will fill, face in manufacturing because of the uncertainties, mm. I think the panel was there to introduce not just us, but different kind of players, um, what can be done, what technologies are out there, from robotics to AI to software. Um, was very interesting panel, yes. Well, Jack World, of course, is our pilgrimage. Yeah, We go yeah. there every year Yes. and uh, you've been there. Um, what other highlights have you planned for 2024 mm -hmm. and maybe beyond? Where could people, if they listen to this, yeah. see you, watch you, talk to you on events? Yeah. Of course, the last two years we really identified what are the, the most important fairs, mm -hmm. where do you need to be, mm -hmm. where do you meet the people um, that you want to meet. Um, and of course check uh, from the composite side, but then we also go uh, and see the Chemex uh, in September and I think this year San Diego, beginning of September. Okay. So we are going to be there then. Um, of, I'm flying out next week um, in preparation for the MPE, the largest plastic show in, in Orlando. Um, then the, the traditional ones. We have Fakuma, the K shows. I think next year mm -hmm. uh, coming up again. This is always the highlight. Okay. But we also um, explored um, um, other events like in Mexico, the Plasimagen. I have been mm -hmm. last year. So we are we are looking at different kinds of one. I think the the fairs that are very in interesting for us. And we will explore them this year and next year are product related uh, mm -hmm. uh, exhibitions mm -hmm. where for example aerospace uh, seattle uh, was in the beginning of the year the um, pnaa mm -hmm. so where you see actually products displayed so players tier ones or yep. oem showcase their products and here we can make an impact we can we can talk to them we can exchange with them not just because we want to sell of course our mm -hmm. technology no but also to understand better the needs the market needs what is the feature that we have to develop in the future um, to really be in exchange with this um, yeah with this customer.